Forged in Fire is a TV show known for making and testing different weapons, so it should be one of your favorites if you've been watching it. Before we go into the video fully, we'd like you to do a little and swift task for us. Go ahead and get started and do well by hitting the like button, tapping the subscribe button, and turning on post notifications. Once you've done that, go ahead and get a comfortable seat, maybe some popcorn, and sit back like you're in the cinema, because this video will surely blow your mind. Number 10. The Japanese Katana the Japanese katana is a single-edged blade with a curve and is held with both hands. It is flexible to use and quite strong, making the katana the blacksmith had to repeatedly heat and form the steel over and over and over to make sure that it's strong and sharp enough to use. You may be thinking, what can be so special and expensive about this sword? Well, it is flexible, strong, and sharp, and it was used mostly by samurai and is one of the most iconic weapons to date. Will such a weapon be cheap? The winner of this episode claims he spent 45 hours working on this sword. That is a lot of time. Taking into consideration the resources he made use of while making it? Absolutely expensive. Just keep watching as we move on to the next in the list. Number 9. The Glaive Guisson the Glaive Guasson was shown in Season 3 of this show. This blade is enormously huge and intimidating. Merely looking at it and you'll know that this isn't just a cheap or small weapon. It was used in France around the 13th and 14th century. It is incredibly long. If you saw this particular episode, it is even taller than the host of the show. It has some curve and design which makes it more difficult and expensive to make. You should be enjoying the video by now. Keep watching to see the exact sword that tops the list. It could be your favorite sword or a sword that you are very familiar with familiar with. Number 8. Elizabethan Rapier this is an iconic weapon. It was shown on the first season of the show and its history points back to Italy, Spain, and England. The blade is extremely narrow and the man claims it is extremely difficult to create. Another man said that on the scale of 1 to 10 in terms of difficulty, it will be an 11. It was mostly used in the 16th and 17th century. Seeing the Elizabethan rapier, you'll know that this isn't a cheap blade. It's a very expensive one to create, let alone own. The Elizabethan rapier is not a small weapon that you can just overlook. It has a history and strength that can rank among the greatest weapons ever created. Take a close look at this weapon. Do you really think it's a cheap one? No. No, not by a long stretch. Number 7. Cane Sword the cane sword contains a hidden blade which makes it expensive to make. Imagine creating a killing weapon with a hidden blade. It wouldn't be cheap to create. The cane sword has a thin but long blade, and it's very sharp on both sides, sharpened to be swung about with one or both hands. This sword is not cheap. Think about the amount of time and resources used to make a thin blade. Also, the cane that it's hidden within, hollowing out the cane and so much more. It's not something small, obviously not. This is number seven. Let's move on to number six. Just make sure you stick around to see number one, you will be amazed. Number six, Kanda. The Kanda was shown on season two of the show and it can be traced back to the Indian subcontinent. It is a straight sword with a double edge and is commonly used in the Indian martial arts. The blade is broad, but it is quite heavy. On seeing this weapon with the thick blade, you'll know it is not a cheap one when you consider the production process and the amount of material used to create it. Number 5. The Zweihander the Zweihander is a large two-handed sword primarily used during the 16th century. It is a hallmark of the German warrior. It is a wavy blade used extensively in pike battles. The wavy blade design makes it a little bit more difficult to make, unlike other straight swords, and the resources needed to make it won't seem cheap. The blade was introduced in season three of the show. It is up to six feet long and has up to eight pounds of weight. The Zweihander is not just some random small sword. It is absolutely expensive to make, and its worth isn't like some other small sword. Since the beginning of the countdown, you've seen some expensive weapons. Just imagine the weapon that tops the list. And the waves of the blades could be used when smashing down on pikes. 
Number 4. Barbarian Sword this sword is one of the fiercest looking weapons we've seen on this show, and it is an expensive blade with high carbon steel as the main material with a long polished wooden handle. What makes it expensive is the carbon steel. Just imagine creating a sword with high carbon steel. It isn't something easy or cheap to create and work with. Absolutely expensive. This sword also has a long length and a very sharp crushing cut. This is just number four. Which weapon will be the top? Stick around and find out. Number 3. Nagamaki you should be very familiar with this weapon. It is one of the most common weapons on the show. The Nagamaki is a traditionally made Japanese sword with an extra long handle. It was used by the samurai class of feudal Japan. It is a single edged blade with a blade three feet long as well as the handle. It is handling with both hands which makes it very easy to flip around with the leather or silk cord wrapped handle. It was introduced in season six. Seeing the Nagamaki, you should know that will be very expensive sword. Why? Because of its history and various features. The blade, the handle, and its strength and sharpness. The weapon is almost unbelievable. Would such an iconic weapon ever be a cheap one? That's a capital N-O. You've gone far enough. We're almost there and it is only one sword that's in the way of seeing number one. Let's check that one out now and then move straight on to the sword that tops the list. The blade. <laughs> nice. Number two, the Viking sword. If you are a fan on Forged and Fire, you should have seen the Viking Sword. The Vikings are known to be ruthless warriors and so is this weapon, and it is one of the most iconic weapons ever created, which makes it pretty expensive in terms of construction and history. It was developed in the 8th century and was prevalent in Western and Northern Europe during the early Middle Ages. When you look at the Viking Sword, you know this weapon is intimidating crazy and at the same time beautiful to look at. This is not a sword in the category of cheap swords. This one is absolutely expensive. Now we've gone through nine different swords and we are about to move to the main business, which is number one. Number one, the Scottish Claymore. Were you expecting to see the Scottish Claymore in our number one spot? Well, then maybe you guessed right. The Scottish Claymore is one of the most iconic longswords ever created. As the name implies, it originated from Scotland sometime in the 1500s. It is a double-edged five-foot-long sword with the blade being four feet of that length. It was introduced on Forged in Fire in season two. The Scottish Claymore is a very intimidating weapon. An average soldier has to use both hands to swing it. This sword is said to be very expensive to create. And when you take a look at the materials and the time, it makes sense. Adding into that the various features and the history, you'll know that this is an expensive sword. The Scottish Claymore is believed to be the fan favorite and was used by Scotland's fiercest warriors. This is not just some random sword, nor is it cheap. Ben, this blade just sliced all the way through that carcass. This is our list of wildly expensive swords on Forged in Fire. Thank you for watching Film Trip. What do you think? Which weapon is your favorite so far? We would love to get your opinion in the comments section below. While you're at it, hit the subscribe button, like the video, and hit a bell icon to get notified instantly when we have another lovely video for you. Bye for now.